the best probably thing, the best contribution you could do to any team interaction or one-on-one -on -one interaction is helping yourself and, and the person you talk with to, you know, it's almost like a choice in every single situation. Do you shift more towards your better self or do you shift more towards your ego uh, driven self um, with, you know, a lot of a, a very different interaction and a very different outcomes usually. And that choice, like you need to make for yourself as a leader in every given moment in a conversation. We just had like a meeting today in the morning where like Hilke, for example, made the choice to, to say, I'm sorry about something that just happened a moment ago. And that's a choice, right? You make it right there. Um, so, uh, and I I think that's that's that requires a lot of in tune with yourself, a lot of in tune with what's happening and um, certain sort of boldness and transparency um, in your interactions. I'm thinking that we usually end this with something practical, right? That you you um, can take to your teams and work with. And um, I was thinking that a good practice for thinking about goals and aligning is um, from twos. And it's a practice, let's say, I'm going to describe it and I'll, I'll, I'll ask um, Hilke and Carson to come into. It's a practice where you sit, you know, spend a little bit of time with your team, basically brainstorming um, the main themes that are not working so great in terms of us um, either setting goals or progressing towards our goals and uh, what you would like to see instead what would be the ideal, you know, the ideal um, a vision of either how we work together or how we work with these goals and so on. And that usually results in a list of between five and 10 areas um, uh, that we want to change, basically, uh, which which then becomes a vehicle for us to discuss what what the, what exactly we could do, right? What commitments each of us can make? What commitment we can make as a team, uh, uh, which gives us a um, mechanism, you know, to come back to and 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 um, serves as our internal sort of progress metrics, I would say. So Hilke, you have uh, a lot of experience using this particular practice, so maybe you you want to add. Yes. So what we're doing here, we're inviting you into the practice of developmental goals. You can all have all kinds of goals. You can have outcome goals uh, and you can have individual goals. You also can have developmental goals. Like how do you want to shift the behavior of your team? And that's why I like from twos because they're very specific and you're all aligned in it on a certain on a, on a common language, right? So one from two, we have a growth leaders network is going pursuing many different things to being very focused. And so when Elena says to me in a team meeting, let's focus, I don't only hear her say, let's focus. I also hear her say, let's practice something that we agreed to before. And because I have a deeper relationship with that from two, something in my neural, neural system gets activated. It's like, oh yeah, right, focus, focus. I remember what that feels like. And I get shifted that way, uh, like being tune back into uh, resonance, basically, what I should be doing. So I see that a lot with teams where these from twos become uh, beacons that guide people and become a language to achieve the goal together in a much easier way. Uh, Carson, what do you want to say about from twos? Yeah, I love that. Um, that is a practice that my organization leverages quite heavily. And uh, when I think about from twos, I think, you know, one of the ones that jumps out to me most is going from a reactive state to a proactive state. I believe strongly that great leaders uh, help their teams see around corners. And what that means is based on the collective experience of a team or situations that you navigate through, whether they go your way or not, you can take that key learning and you can help your team to see proactively around the corner um, based on that experience, based on where you've been and what you've encountered. And so um, I think that can help you get into more of a proactive state 
of connected teamwork, you know what's coming because you view a situation, you've been here before, or someone has. And I think that's why it's important to tap into the collective knowledge of the teams that you work with, because it's very likely that if you reach out and you, uh, I heard this weekend that um, one of the greatest superpowers is asking for help, uh, the ability to ask for help. And if you're willing and able to ask a colleague, a mentor, or even uh, someone else in the organization who has some uh, wisdom and experience how to do something or to help you in any given scenario, it is a multiplier because it will make you better and it will take you from the position of being reactive to more in the driver's seat so you can keep a steady hand on the wheel. Consistency is the key to leadership. I think a lot of times where we become reactive is because when we are surprised by a situation or because when we act out of a uh, desperation or out of emotion. And it's important to feel those emotions and understand them. But what we want to ultimately do is funnel and fuel that into a more proactive and uh, uh, decision based out of confidence.